Well, their noses have been used to catch hundreds and hundreds of criminals. Drug-sniffing dogs like Frankie here provide signals to police, which are often used as a basis to conduct a search. But now, the U.S. Supreme Court expected to decide whether that is actually a violation of your Fourth Amendment rights, especially if it concerns dogs sniffing at the front door of your home. Keisha Heaven and David Schwartz are both defense attorneys and former prosecutors. Good to have you here both. Hello. All right, you. this case it worked its way all the way to the Supreme Court because dogs went up to somebody's home, sniffed, smelled drugs inside, and of course there was a warrantless search then perpetrated. Is that an unreasonable violation of the Fourth Amendment, Keisha? I say not. And really? I, I say not because in this particular case, the police officers had a reasonable suspicion. And that reasonable suspicion was that they received an anonymous tip that this home had marijuana being grown in it. And when they went to the home, the dog detected the odor from outside of the house. So mm -hmm. that's not an intrusive violation of privacy. What if it were police outside, Keisha, listening in with parabolic microphones? That's a totally different issue. How is that different than drug sniffing dogs? Aren't the, they almost identical? No, it's not. Because with the microphone, they're listening on either le illegal and legal activity. Whereas with the dog, these dogs are trained to detect error marijuana, which is an illegal activity. Is she wrong, David? She's absolutely wrong, Greg. The, the, the police have no business being on this porch in the first place. There is a Fourth Amendment. There is a Constitution. There's probable cause, not reasonable suspicion. There's got to be probable cause to enter that house. And by the dog sniffing on that porch, outside that house, that constitutes, constitutes an illegal search and seizure in violation of the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution. But David, absolutely, you're Keisha. You're forgetting that the, they did not go into the house. The dog gave them the probable cause to do the search. So it was not a violation of the Fourth Amendment right when the dog was outside of the house and detected the odor. And remember, they were doing surveillance of this home. Our government is there for one reason, and that's to have the dogs perform this illegal search. That porch area is an illegal search when it comes to these dogs sniffing inside. All right, Keisha, what about a thermal imaging device that police might use outside a home that could detect heat on the inside that's being used by heat lamps to grow marijuana. Is that a violation? How is that different than dog sniffing or drug sniffing dogs? Again, you can distinguish that because this thermal imaging technology, they're able to pick up on heat for any issue or any use, not just the growing of marijuana. So I read an article that it could be used to tell when the bath water is hot. David, That's different. here is the seminal case by the United States Supreme Court 10 years ago, the Kylo versus U.S. case. We'll put it up. Here's essentially the point of it, the holding in the case. Surveillance becomes a search, which requires a warrant, if it reveals sights or sounds that the suspect reasonably believed would be private. Now, if you're inside a home and you happen to have, you know, drugs and so forth, um, you, it's still your castle, and don't you have a reasonable expectation of privacy? Uh, absolutely. It's not, it's not a sight or a sound, but it is a smell inside the house. And I am confident that when the, this case goes up to the United States Supreme Court, the United States Supreme Court will rule in a similar fashion. This shroud of privacy is at the heart of the Fourth Amendment, I and disagree. they will not there let that go away. There is this thing called the Plain View Doctrine. It also applies to people's castles, their right. homes. Right. If you have, for example, contraband that's sitting next to a window and it can be seen from the street, a public place, right. and police can see that. They don't need a probable cause search warrant. They can seize it. Well, but the, here, the, that's not the case. It's not within plain view. Keisha. The same thing could go for the reasonable smell doctrine. I have did appellate cases where the issue was the officers detected the odor of marijuana. In this case, the dog detected it outside of the home. But a human couldn't detect it in this case. Only a, a dog with hyper senses could do it. Uh, but those cases are in a car. They're outside of the house. Once you're talking well, we were about... Out, the dog was outside of the house the, here. I think everyone's forgetting that. It wasn't yes. inside no, 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 of the that, house. But the dog is is on that porch for one reason and one reason only, and that's to perform an illegal search and seizure. That dog smelling the marijuana inside the house is an illegal uh, search I, and I'm seizure. I'm willing to bet that this is an extension of the Kylo case 10 years ago and that the court will say this is unreasonable violation of the Fourth Amendment. We'll wait and see. We'll see. It'll be interesting. <laughs> Greg, you've agreed with
with me today. I can't believe <laughs> it's it. It's stunning because you always lose these arguments. David Schwartz, Keisha Heaven, good to see you both. Good to Thanks see so you much. too. All right, Heather? Good debate.